next talk, I think the um, uh, very happy to uh, to introduce uh, Patric Pat Patricia Feeney, who is Crossref's uh, head of metadata. And I was just calling up the uh, the slides now, and um, because the talk is in Keynote, it actually says on the file it says metadata dot key. So I think that's a good introduction. So welcome, Patricia. So, um, if, you, if you've seen the schedule online, um, the, on the sketch thing, it says the title of my talk is I am the boss of your metadata, which I don't think that's really true. I think you are the boss of your metadata. And I'm not even the boss of Crossref me metadata, you guys really are, but I'm um, kind of here to shepherd it through the process of, of distribution, I guess you could say. Um, I've been working with Crossref for 10 years, and I have, um, I've worked with metadata for more years than that, but with Crossref, I've, I've primarily been in charge of support, and that's a lot of metadata support, but I'm happy to, to move, kind of move beyond that into a more strategic role where I can focus on metadata. Um, but I thought, it's mid-morning, um, we've got a break next, I thought maybe we could do a little quiz before I launch into uh, what um, my uh, strategic plans are for your metadata. Um, and it, so um, my first question is, can you find out where content is or will be ar archived using Crossref metadata? If you think yes, you can stick up your hand or wave your flag. Yes, anyone? So, okay, so a few people think the answer is yes. The answer is, I hope so. And what that, what that means is that you can send us that metadata in our metadata schema. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people maybe don't have it in their infrastructure to send us that, that um, information. But when you become a member, this is a wobbly podium, podium and I'm really uh, clumsy, so <laughs> keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> this could be pretty funny. Um, so um, I think this kind of issue, something that we collect that's really important, I think it's important for Crossref that DOIs always resolve. It's important for you that your content is, uh, is maintained and is safe somewhere and is archived somewhere. Um, but we don't really have a lot of that in our metadata. Some of you do a good job of sending that little tiny piece of metadata to us. Some of you um, don't. You're still doing a good job. Um, I like to be positive, but you're not sending us that particular piece of metadata. Um, so so cr currently, right now, this also illustrates another one of my points. Um, you can include a set list of archives in your metadata, and I don't think it's comprehensive. I'd like it to be comprehensive, and I like it to evolve, um, but that really can only happen when people start sending us that piece of money, piece of money, <laughs> piece of metadata. <laughs> <laughs> See, if you think of metadata as money, I, I don't know where, where I could go with that, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> yeah, so, so um, it, you know, this is this sort of thing. We want to know if, if, you, if you look at our, our schema and you say, oh, well, I don't archive my metadata there. I'm just not going to send it to you. Um, you know, that's not what we want to happen. We want you to be able to communicate to us that you need a change. Okay, an another question. Which of the below is both a metadata format and a Pokemon? Anyone think A? No. B? A few people think B. C? D? A few people think D. And I can tell who's, who's played Pokemon Go and who hasn't. No. Um, the, the answer is B, Onyx. It's a Pokemon resembling a chain of boulders and it has a magnet in its brain. And it's also the metadata format used mostly for books. Um, from those answers, A and C were metadata formats, and, and D was the evolved form of the Onyx Pokemon. So, just so you know. I have no point. I, I just I came across this once when I was looking something, something up, and I thought it was really funny. So I like to share it as often as I can. <laughs> so what is the worst type of metadata? A, incorrect, anyone? B, incomplete, C, 
see, inaccessible. Oh, a lot of people say inaccessible. D, indescribable. Okay, a few people say that. The answer is all of them. <laughs> bad metadata is bad metadata. It's, you know, if it's wrong, it's telling you the wrong thing. If it's not there, it's also telling you the wrong thing because it tells you the information doesn't exist. And if you can't get to it, it's like it doesn't exist. And if it's indescribable, I mean, that's, it's, it's supposed to describe things, so there you go. Okay, so this is my last question. How many versions of our metadata deposit schema do we support? So that's the main deposit schema that you put all of the metadata in. Would that be A, one, B, two, eight, C, 11, we got a few answers for 11, and D, 23. Chuck, do you wanna guess? No, 11. <laughs> So we support versions 4.3 through 4.2. Um, so that's a lot. Um, it's all backwards compatible, so it's actually, like when I say we support, it's not that much work to support it, but there are a lot of them, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. So, um, which, but that brings me to um, talking about um, how we want our metadata to evolve. Um, we do try to make things easy for you. We try to accommodate the needs of our members, but we also, um, there's you know, a larger need for our metadata to change. Um, and fortunately, I think a lot of the metadata we collect isn't going to change significantly. So we don't really need to go not be backwards compatible with what we've collected in the past. But every time we do issue a new schema, that is because we are collecting new metadata and we're trying to do something important. Um, so we want you to be able to pay attention to that. Um, and one of the changes I think that we'd like to see is that historically, we're, we're a small organization. We haven't had someone kind of steering the metadata ship. I've been involved and Chuck's been involved, but we all have other responsibilities. And as an organization, we're devoted to, mem to metadata. But we really, um, we've tried very hard to respond to our member needs, like what our membership is telling us they need to send us. Um, but we'd really like to get ahead of that and anticipate the community needs. More and more we have people coming to us and saying, um, well, what kind of metadata do you think this organization will need? Or how should we, I'd, I'd really, I, I've, I've heard about data citation. How should we be sending that to you? So we really kind of want to get ahead of the game with that. Um, and there's a few ways we're going to do that. But first I want to talk a little bit about your metadata. So this, if you look at this zebra, think of this as your metadata in its native format, which might be JATS, it might be some format specific to your organization. Um, it's, you know, it's a beautiful zebra. It's got legs. It can you know, roam about with the other animals. Um, think <laughs> this is your cross-ref metadata. We like to think, um, well, we do. I mean, we, we do a lot with your metadata. Um, we distribute it to organizations that help make your content easy to cite, link, and assess. Um, we don't change it when you send it to us, but we might, you know, gussy it up and send it um, along through different channels, but we don't collect all of your metadata. Um, some of that is because it's not really relevant to our goals. Um, it might be very specific to your organization. Uh, some of your metadata we don't get because um, maybe you're not able to send it to us for some reason. Uh, maybe you don't have it yourself. Uh, it could be that um, you do have it, you don't understand why you need to send it to Crossref and it's a lot of work to, to mark it up and send it along, um, uh, formatted according to our very specific schema so you just don't do it. Um, unfortunately, we do have some members, this is, this is what your metadata looks like in Crossref. Uh, not all of you, I hope most of you have the more beautiful zebra that has legs, but some of you have a legless zebra. It's a little colorful. Because, you know, if, if you're registering your DOI and your, your, your URL, someone can find your content and that's a good thing. But it, we really, um, we need you to be providing us with specific things like all of your authors. Um, we'd like to collect 
information about those authors, like how did they contribute to this work? Um, and that, that goes well beyond, beyond what we're actually collecting now, I, I, I'd say. Um, and unfortunately, we've got a few black sheep. <laughs> I, I, I don't think any of them are here, because I think if you're a black sheep, you probably wouldn't be coming to our member meeting. But <laughs> they are there, and I think of those as the members who register a few DOIs, and we, we don't really know what else they're doing. We don't understand it ourselves. Um, but, but I'm hoping in the, in the future with this dedicated metadata role, we'll be able to dig into that and figure out why we're not getting to these sheep. But ultimately, our goal is to have all of your metadata. I'm, I don't mean all of it. I mean, there's, there's stuff like, I, I know you have metadata about how things are priced, that sort of thing. Um, we might, we don't really need everything, but everything that's relevant to our goals as a, a community about make, making your content discoverable and um, ensuring that uh, it's always, um, you can always link to it with a DOI, making sure that it's easily citable, um, making sure that people can identify things about your content, like what kind of license is used and, and how the research was funded and what kind of external objects are related to a journal article, like what, uh, if, if a set of data is associated with a, a journal article or a preprint, that sort of thing. So um, I, I can't say we're quite there yet, but we're working on it, and hopefully we'll have this magical moment where our colorful zebra becomes a zebra unicorn. So, <laughs> so how are we gonna do that? Um, as Ed mentioned, this is a new role, so I haven't really kicked off a lot of stuff. I'm still kind of finding my legs and telling people I'm in charge of their metadata and uh, moving away from my support role, which um, Isaac's gonna talk uh, later about the, the, the exciting things that are going on with support now, so I'm happy. Um, but um, one of the things we really need is community input. We've always collected input from the community, but it's been kind of, sporadic, it hasn't been really concentrated. I'm thinking um, we're going to start doing some metadata community calls where I can communicate to you what's going on with our metadata and you can communicate your needs to me. Um, I'm really excited about doing more open schema development. I'm gonna throw the schema up on GitHub and um, discuss um, what changes we want to make, get some feedback people can suggest um, change, you know, all that wonderful thing, sort of conversations that happen in forums like GitHub. Um, so we can have more active communication about what updates we're going to be making, as well as having more active updates in, in the future. We're really communicating, uh, committed to, to making ongoing changes to improve the metadata we collect. Um, and I do think the open schema development is a really important part of that. Um, one of the things I've struggled with, I, I have been uh, kind of a channel for metadata changes, but I haven't been the channel for metadata changes on our end. So I think having one person in charge of that and uh, channels to the community to discuss that will be a big deal. Um, we also want to do more collaboration. We're a very collaborative organization. I think all of us are in a bazillion working groups, so I don't want to, volunteer myself for more, but <laughs> but I'm happy to. But, um, you know, we're gonna co collaborate with other um, organizations in our space. Um, I know a lot of you use JATS, so we're, we're gonna um, step up our focus on JATS and make it so that those of you who do have your content in JATS can send us metadata and not lose big chunks of it on the way. And of course, um, I know some of you are familiar with Metadata 2020. A lot of us work with Metadata 2020. And if there are more uh, opportunities for collaboration, I'd love to hear about them, so feel free to um, contact me. Um, I want to talk a, just a little bit about reasons why we would change the metadata we collect. Um, they're pretty simple. Um, we want to collect new metadata. Um, as I mentioned, that could either, that historically has been because our community has said, we wanna send this to you and we work with you to figure out the best way for you to do that. 
Um, we want to refine the metadata we collect. I mean, this is our industry's evolving a lot, scholarly communication is evolving. So maybe what the way we were collecting something 10 years ago isn't really relevant today, and we need to revisit that, or even two years ago, or even a year ago with some of this stuff. And we also make changes for metadata quality reasons. And those are um, usually, um, if, if you're already sending us good metadata, that won't have a big impact on you. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, so, so when we do make a change to our, meta, our metadata, um, we kind of divide, divide them into three categories. Minor, that's something that wouldn't have significant downstream effects. So if you have a suggestion for maybe adding a value to a list of, enumerated value to a list for an attribute, that's something that we could make that is technically simple, but you know would obviously need community discussion. Um, changing any kind of validation, um, changing uh, you know field lengths, that sort of thing. Um, something adding n a new piece of metadata data has a little bit of more of a downstream effect because we have to make sure um, that gets put into our outputs, and those outputs are communicated to the people who actually retrieve our metadata. Um, a critical update would be something that's not backwards compatible. We see very few of those, and hopefully we'll see very few of those in the future. Um, I do anticipate at some point we'll revamp the entire schema. I think it is, it's a little long in the tooth, I guess you could say, in some ways. So it would be great to, you know, I, I've, I've lived in my house for like eight years, and every now and then I'm like, I just want to move to a new one. <laughs> But, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like that decision. There's a lot that goes into it. It impacts a lot of people. So it's not something we do lightly, even though, you know, I look at Zillow constantly looking for a new house. You know, I'm not going to just move to a new one. And we're not going to just move to a new schema and throw out all of the work everyone's done into sending us metadata over the years. So um, just to finish up, I want to talk about our metadata goals. Um, we really, we want to come up with some kind of guiding principles for Crossref. And I was working in some for this meeting. I thought that would be a, this would be a great place to launch our principles. And then the more I thought about it, I thought, wouldn't it be great to get feedback from people about what you want from our metadata? Because I don't, do this for me. I don't really have any use for your metadata, honestly, personally. Um, <laughs> it's, so, you know, we're, we're doing this for all of you. So these are just my ideas of, about what we want out of your metadata. We want it to be accurate. Um, Chuck's going to talk a lot about metadata quality in a bit, so I won't go into it too much. Um, but, you know, we want metadata that's correct. You know, the author names need to be correct. The um, page numbers or article numbers need to be correct. As, as I mentioned before, if it's not correct, it's, it's pretty useless. Or it's actually worse than useless. It can be harmful because it causes the wrong DOIs to be matched to the wrong citation, which is just, it's, 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 it's a very bad thing. <laughs> it's not as bad as the midterm elections or anything, but um, it, it's a bad thing. And we want the metadata to be complete. You know, if it doesn't exist, it's, it's not useful. I mean, it's, I guess it's better to have nothing than something that's wrong, but it's still a bad thing. And we want it to be up to date. That means updating URLs. That means sending in updated license information. And that also means, on our end, making sure the metadata we collect is up to date, that we're not behind what you need to be distributing. Um, we want interoperable metadata. And this is some, something where I think on our end we need to do some more work. Um, we, we want our metadata to play well with other formats, and that's just both for you sending us metadata and us exporting the metadata. Um, we want our metadata to be very PID friendly. I mean, you could argue that it's the most PID friendly metadata since it's used to register a persistent identifier, but um, I think, you know, as we create more and more of these useful identifiers, um, like, uh, my, my vision is to have a record that's, like, mostly identifiers. You know, we don't have to do these, like, fields where you have to come up with a name for something. We'll just stick it in an identifier and call it a day. 
I'm sure that'll happen. <laughs> and we, we want flexible metadata. Our metadata isn't just for looking up DOIs. It's for connecting funding. It's for connecting objects to each other. Um, um, we really want, as, as I said before, we want our metadata to keep up with our community needs, and we need it to be backwards compatible. So basically, we want all of the, the metadata that, that makes research easy to find, cite, link, assess, and reuse. Um, I don't think we have all of it. Um, I don't think we collect all of it, but I think that's kind of our guiding light, and that's where we want to end up. Um, so midday, around lunchtime, we have um, our um, unplugged session. Um, I, a few people have mentioned the... Uh, perfect metadata record that I created. So if you go back there, you'll see it says a perfect metadata record with a question mark because it is perfect. There was something that was left out and I totally left it out on purpose to see if anyone could find it. I didn't forget to add it in. It was, it was on purpose. So if you, if you find that, um, good for you. But also, um, I would really appreciate any feedback. I know I've had a lot of conversations with some people in this room about their frustrations with the Crossref schema. So we have Sharpies and Post-it notes, and I, I welcome you to go back and, and back there and write on the board. This is your opportunity to write on walls um, in public. Um, you know, make comments, cross things out, say this is this is a stupid name for this. I mean, it would be nice to keep it clean, but. Um, you know, we welcome all the feedback. I also have another wall that, that lists kind of the, the terms we want to use when thinking about our metadata, and I welcome feedback on that as well. Um, and that's about it. I, I hope you'll uh, join me in the back room when it co the time comes. Thank you. Any questions? 